Okay, what is... What is that? Those are ears. This case takes place in the state of Florida in the United States of America on the 13th of March 2021. Florida is known as the Sunshine State and is famous for its beautiful beaches, amusement parks and idyllic retirement communities. It is however home to some of the most chilling crime cases and in today's episode it becomes the backdrop for a story that is as unsettling as it is tragic. Colby Allen Parker was a Florida native, just like his parents and their parents before them. Even at age 30, Colby spent a lot of his time with his family, and in particular, his grandfather, Ronald Wells Sr. The two men were so close that they actually lived together in the same home. The older man was a Vietnam War veteran who appreciated Colby's company as well as the opportunity to show his grandson how to make better choices after some missteps in Colby's younger years. At around 6.40pm on the 13th of March 2021, deputies in Lake County responded to reports of a stabbing. Officers arrived on the scene and were met with a bloody and brutal scene. Colby and Ronald were both covered in blood, but only one of the men was standing. Colby was standing off to one side of the porch, while Ronald was laying motionless on the stairs leading up towards the front door. It was immediately clear that the man on the ground needed medical attention, so officers asked Colby to step out of the way so Ronald's injuries could be assessed. Colby agreed, and he stepped down to stand by the police cruiser while a deputy checked his grandfather for signs of life. Tragically, they found none. 77-year-old Ronald Wells Sr. was pronounced dead at the scene. Given the state of his body, it was clear that he had either been attacked or involved in some kind of fight which had ended his life. What officers found most concerning is that Colby was also covered in blood, but he was able to speak clearly and he didn't seem to have any trouble walking or moving around. His lack of injuries indicated that he was either responsible for his grandfather's death or at least involved in some way. While the scene was cordoned off, an officer spoke to Colby to see what had happened that night. Colby told the officer that he had been smoking a bowl of weed with his grandfather on the porch when Ronald had randomly started to attack him with a knife. Colby claimed that he had no choice but to defend himself. He said he was able to wrestle the knife out of his grandfather's hands and turn it towards him. He then said that he felt the weapon go into Ronald's heart which is when he dropped the knife and called 911. At first glance, the story might seem like a plausible explanation, self-defense with a tragic ending. Except, one thing didn't add up. When the police looked closer to Ronald's body, they found that the injuries did not match up with the self-defense explanation. Ronald had four stab wounds to the chest and a partial degloving of his right forearm and hand. Degloving is a type of severe injury that happens when the top layers of skin and tissue are ripped from the underlying muscle, connective tissue, or bone. And there was one more incredibly disturbing and unusual injury. Ronald's ears had been removed from his head. The officers on the scene did not want to take any chances with Colby, and they asked if he would consent to a search of his person. He agreed, and an officer stepped forward to pat him down, but first, he asked Colby if he had any weapons on him. Colby replied, yes, but when the officers carried out the search, they did not find any items of concern. However, he did note that there was something firm but soft inside of Colby's pockets, which he didn't ask the suspect to remove. When the search was complete, one of the officers asked Colby where Ronald Wells Jr. was. As it turned out, that the 911 caller had provided Colby's uncle's name when they reported the incident. Colby repeated their question back. Do you want to know where Ronald Wells Jr. is? The officer confirmed the question. That's when Colby reached into his pockets and pulled out two human ears. 
He handed the ears to the police officer and said, this is where he is. Almost immediately after handing over the blooded ears, Colby began to physically escalate the situation. Hey, hey, don't do that, buddy. Don't do that. That's not Sit good. your ass back down. You said you were armed. What are you armed with? What do you, what do you have on you? What do you got on you? Turn and place him against the car. We're not going to keep playing this game. No. We're going to have some issues. Hands there. Get this grabbing hand. Yeah. Let's get this figured out. There's a dog. It's right. aggressive. Other than that, I don't know where Junior is. I asked and he didn't know. So. Oh, oh, oh. What, what, what? Junior? Yeah. Where's Junior? Ronnie and Ronnie Junior, right here. Ronnie. Okay, what is. What is that? Those are ears. Those are ears. Can you hold those up for me? He grabbed for one of the officer's tasers and guns, and kicked, punched, and headbutted three deputies who were attempting to arrest him. During the scuffle, one of the officers discharged his taser, but the shock had little effect on Colby. When they were finally able to restrain him, he was arrested and charged with battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting with violence. He was then placed into the back of a police cruiser and transported to a local hospital to receive medical treatment. The hospital visit was a short one because the medical personnel found no injuries whatsoever on Colby. All of the blood that was covering his arms and clothing didn't belong to him. It had all come from his grandfather. When Colby calmed down enough to be interviewed, he was read his Miranda rights. He agreed to answer questions about the incident, and he declined his right to have a lawyer present for the interview. This time, Colby was able to add a little more detail to his story about what happened that night. Colby claimed that in the early evening, the two men had decided to smoke, which was something they did often together. It was a nice evening, so they sat out on the porch and chatted as they got high. At this point, the second retelling of the story began to diverge from the statement he had provided at the scene. This time, Colby told the officers that they had begun to argue. So Colby picked up a baseball bat which had been left out on the porch, and he used it to hit his grandfather around the head. When Ronald was down on the ground, Colby went back into the house and found a large butcher's knife on the table. He went back outside and began to stab his own grandfather multiple times in the neck and chest. Although he denied any knowledge of how his grandfather's hand had been degloved. When Colby was asked why he went back and stabbed his grandfather when the fight was already over, he provided a disturbing motive. He told officers that he wanted his grandmother and grandfather to be reunited in heaven. He had decided that it was his grandfather's time to go. After the interview, it was clear that the attack wasn't an act of self-defense. It was an act of murder. This lined up with the evidence that had been found at the scene during the investigation. Officers found the bloody baseball bat lying on the side of the porch, as well as the butcher's knife which had been used in the attack. 
Ronald's autopsy showed several slices and gashes on his arms, which were determined to be defensive wounds. The officers made another disturbing discovery when they looked through Colby's room at his grandfather's house. In his bedroom, they found an apron hanging on the door, and on this apron were the words, The Family Butcher, and attached to the front were two plastic human ears which were covered in fake blood. Body cam footage which recorded the incident seems to indicate that Colby was under the influence of something very strong. At one point, Colby is seen standing by a police cruiser while other officers are attempting to help his grandfather. Colby asked one of the deputies, Can I see your gun, bro? The officer said no, which greatly angered Colby. That is when he suddenly became violent and aggressive towards the deputies on the scene. It took four officers to restrain him because he kept reaching for their weapons whilst they attempted to handcuff him. Officials were later able to confirm that Colby's uncle, Ronald Wells Jr., was not involved in the incident as he was in Georgia at the time. And Colby was confirmed to have been the one who actually called 911 and has never been clear why he provided his uncle's name. After the interview and the scene investigation, Colby was indicted on four charges. One count of premeditated murder in the first degree, two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer, and one count of resisting arrest. He remains in custody in Lake County until his trial, which is scheduled to take place sometime in 2023, although I couldn't find any details of when this will actually happen.